Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inuzor Education. Um, we are continuing talking about statistical regression, uh, about linear statistical regression, and um, I would like to consider one very practical problem. Um, it just came to my mind. It doesn't mean that this is like a real problem which people are facing. But I needed some statistics, so I found some statistics and decided maybe there is some correlation um, which might lead actually to some linear regression. Well, let me just tell you in, in advance, it was an unsuccessful attempt, which means that my linear regression um, can actually be constructed, but the validity of this particular formula which, can, which, which relates two variables which have us uh, which I have found, which I will be talking about. Uh, so validity is uh, basically zero because uh, the error is too big. However, I think it, it, it has some educational value in any case, so I'm going to present it right now to you. Um, I would actually suggest you to go to unisor.com to watch this particular lecture and also to uh, to read the notes for every lecture. Well, in this particular case, I have the problem explained in more detail, so that's probably very useful. In addition, unisor.com allows you to basically establish the educational process with in, um, in enrolling in certain classes, taking exams, etc. And it's free. So anyway, so let's go uh, into this particular problem and let me explain what kind of statistics I have found and uh, how I'm going to use the, uh, these data. So, what I have found was information about um, how many miles total um, were traveled in United States during a particular year, actually every year from something 1920s up until 2014 and how many accident fatalities um, have actually been happening during these times. Now, my initial thought was that, well, obviously the automobile industry was developing in 1920s, it was really very small number of cars and the mileage which they have covered during the year was very small. Well, this is actually for an entire decade. Um, now, um, as the industry developed, obviously number of cars and number of miles traveled increased, which in my view was supposed to increase the number of fatalities on the roads. And as we see, these are increasing numbers. So first of all, I have combined uh, every 10 years together and got the sum. So from 1925 to 34, actually the raw data and the reference to the raw data is in notes on the website uh, to this lecture. So I have combined raw data into uh, decades. So I have 10 years, number of miles traveled and number of uh, fatalities, which is actually a lot. So as we see, it's increasing and my thought was that there is some kind of linear regression which might actually be observed here. So let me just tell you again in the beginning that it's not really entirely true because as we see the miles are increasing now fatalities are increasing up to this decade from 65 to 74 and starting from 75 it's decreasing. Now obviously it distorts the linear relationship between these two numbers. Now, why it's decreasing while the number of miles increasing? Well, I think it's related to certain safety uh, devices which were probably started around 1975, like seat belts and airbags. Obviously, this decreased the number of fatalities, and as the number of these devices filled up more and more, all the new cars, as you see, the number of fatalities go, going down. So that distorts my linear regression model from some kind of logical standpoint. However, uh, being a stubborn person, I decided, okay, let's just investigate if there is any kind of 
linear dependency and what's the error if error is not really very big then it still makes sense well obviously again i felt that it doesn't really make much sense so the error will be very large primarily because of this because it goes down however i might actually suggest you as an exercise to do this only on these data from 1925 to, to 74 and that's where you might actually observe a linear regression um, with a relatively small error but I have decided to do it entirely again for educational purposes and what I am trying to establish is some kind of a dependency which looks like this where y is number a random variable which is number of fatalities x is um, x is mileage covered and epsilon is some kind of error the uh, deviation of this number from this so my purpose is to establish a to establish uh, b based on whatever the data I have and then using these find out the error and analyze statistically analyze this error now I assumed um, when I was deriving all these formulas in the previous lectures that epsilon is a normally distributed random variable with and that's very important um, the mathematical expectation of zero well that's why we have this b as a constant and uh, some standard deviation which we have to establish after a and b are established and since we know the, num uh, the, the real data, observed data for x and y, after we know b, a, a and b, we can establish the, uh, the data for epsilon and find sample deviation. All right, so that's the plan. Um, now, I can refer you back to previous lectures where I have basically derived the formula I'm going to use it right now, that a is sigma x i y i divided by sigma x i square where i from 1 to n i from 1 to n now what is x i and y i in this particular case it's not these guys x and y it's these guys centered around uh, their mathematical expectation so x y x i is equal to lowercase x i minus um, average of all x's and y i is equal to y i minus average observed average of all y's so x with the bar on the top is average of these xi is each individual one and the difference is uh, uh, just a new value uh, w w which is a new random variable with mathematical expectation zero and same thing with y now these two numbers are actually averages so this is x and this is y with a bar so by subtracting we have new variables capital X i and capital uh, y i and obviously the average of these minus this is equal to zero and average of these minus this is also at, uh, equals to zero that's why we have centrally centralized the values now with these centralized values I can calculate a and this is my result now as long as I know a I can calculate the B because if I will take average of these guys now we have agreed that uh, this is zero epsilon is an arrow which has 
mathematical expectation of zero and some standard variation. So that's exactly why we put this constant b. And now we can find constant b, which is equal to average of these minus average of these, right? And I have calculated it. This is b. Okay, so this minus three times this is equal to this. Now I know A and B. And now I can actually have the values for epsilon i is equal to y i minus a x i y i minus and minus b sorry minus a x y x by a times this so this minus three point whatever times this and minus three hundred and forty three thousand whatever now if my calculations are correct, then the sum of all epsilon i should be approximately equal to zero, right? Because that's, that's how we calculated from the very beginning. And it is. Actually, I have calculated this. I mean, if I will add all the epsilons uh, calculated like this, uh, I did it on a spreadsheet, actually. Uh, the result is something like minus one or something like this. Very, very small number relative to these big numbers. But the problem is this. So when I calculated based on these values, when I have calculated sigma epsilon, well, minus zero, so, um, so I just this. This is variation and took a square root of it it was 68,508 now is it good or bad? well it's terrible why? because we are trying to evaluate the value of y the values of y I, uh, uh, as I have explained it's, it's these guys right? average is 3, uh, 389,000 something now, if my standard deviation is 68,000, if I would like to predict the value with a two sigma interval uh, to the left and to the right, so this is my average, right? Now, two sigma to the left, it's minus 135,000. So it goes to, what, 250 or something like this, 1,000. And 130 to the right, so that would be like more than 400. So I have a range like from 250,000 to 400,000. This is too big a range, obviously. I mean, the whole, the whole range is what, like half of this. Now, which means that my estimate is, well, at least, well, like 50% incorrect. That's definitely wrong. If this is something like a couple of percentage points relative to this then it's okay so you have a certain average and then you have certain um, deviation from this average which is no, no, no bigger than 5% let's say then it makes some sense but if deviation is like 50% that's absolutely um, not good in any case but my point was that this is just an exercise in how to do the calculations. And let me just repeat again what I did. First, I centralized all my x values using their average. So I subtracted from each value the average. Some of them will be negative, some of them will be positive. Then I did exactly the same with y, my dependent variable. So this is independent variable mileage. This is dependent variable. <coughs> and, uh, 
and again I centralized it and then I used the formula which I have already wiped out from the board um, the, the formula which gives me the coefficient a now knowing coefficient a I can actually calculate um, the b using these averages obviously right because if you average this this and this epsilon will be averaged to zero so you'll have just an um, equation where you can resolve it for b knowing a and x and y averages so knowing a and b now you can calculate the real value of your error so your regression which is ax plus b where x is this value and knowing a and b like this and this are approximating y and by differencing between y and ax plus b you have a sample uh, data for epsilon for your arrow and using these epsilon data for for eps for for, uh, for arrow you can calculate uh, its average and standard deviation average because of our calculations should be close to zero and it was but then you can you have to basically evaluate how big your deviation is so that's the short plan of how to attack this problem of linear regression be between two um, two different variables now as you understand we had a problem here the problem is that I did not take into account the technological progress um, the safety devices which have been introduced into um, into the car so maybe maybe if I will use instead of one variable independent variable X but three variables like number of airbag equipped cars and number of seat belt equipped cars well maybe I'm not sure about seat belt equipped equipped they were always equipped but at some point there was actual legislation in the United States that you have to really um, wear the seat belts if you are driving a mandatory legislation was mandatory so maybe at that time again somehow I should actually take into account so if I will take into account more independent variable definitely the number of airbags installed then um, my approximation also linear it would be let's say a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus maybe a3 x3 if it's seat belts involved plus some constant b in this case my approximation might be better and my arrow will be smaller but this multivariant analysis regression is much more complex and I really don't want to um, to complicate your, your life even more than it is right now so this is basically something which people are studying um, whenever they're specializing in statistics for you again my purpose was just to explain in the simplest case when one dependent and one independent variable variables are involved in this um, supposedly observed um, relationship and then how to calculate if there is such a relationship and again this is a hypothesis there is a hypothesis and we checked it by basically analyzing the error the hypothesis may be wrong in the very beginning so maybe it's supposed to be somehow different equation maybe it's x square with and and, uh, and or e, e some two to two in the power of x or something like this who knows what kind of real dependency is linear is just the easiest one and it makes sense to check if it makes sense right so we check we get we have the calculations and we check this very uh, this uh, standard deviation of my arrow if it's reasonable then you can use it now how can you use it most likely it's used for the purpose of forecasting because you know that um, at certain point you, you see how this mileage is increasing it obviously depends on the number of cars which are manufactured and this is the planned uh, number planned in advance so basically you understand how many cars will be sold and that's how you can evaluate for the next year 
um, what will be the total mileage again approximately and that would allow you to calculate in this particular case an unfortunate accidents with fat fatalities well that's it in many other cases it has much more practical um, usage these type of calculations um, but the uh, procedure is exactly the same well that's it for today um, I might actually recommend you to go to the raw data for each year instead of summarizing by decade but only for the period up to 75 up, at, up to 1975 then you might actually find a more um, precise linear regression between number of fatalities and um, uh, number of miles traveled during the year because at that point we did not have really so much safety equipment installed into the car primarily airbags well okay that's it for today and um, if you will engage in this analysis of regression um, in the early days of uh, automobile industry up until 1975 let's say um, I'll be more than happy if you um, send it to me I will be more than happy to put it on the web on a website with proper attribution that's it thanks very much and good luck